You know, nothing's random. And the next person you meet could be the person who changes your life. It's gay. It's Christmas. It's Ricky Lake played a delicious patisserie owner. Let's talk about Lifetime's newest lesbian holiday rom-com, Under the Christmas Tree. Now, the first thing to know about this movie is that, like Christmas on the Ranch, this is a good old-fashioned, not particularly concerned about quality, feel-good Christmas movie. The point of this movie is not to give you succession vibes. It's simple. It's to make you feel good. Today is about Ricky Lake and two lesbians falling in love over roughly two hours of ridiculous plot lines. All right, enough hodgepodge and let's unwrap the real gift here under the Christmas tree. Uh huh. Oh. Uh huh. Or oh, who's going to the garden with the heaven? A Christmas macaron with cranberry filling and rosemary essence. Of course, it's not a lifetime movie if there's no Ricky Lake, and I was thrilled to be introduced to her character here via some delicious Christmas macaroons. Great. Now I want Christmas macaroons, and I don't know how to make macaroons. I'm gonna have to go buy them, and they're probably sold out. And there probably aren't macaroons like eight million dollars a macaroon. That's I feel like macaroons are rich people candy. <laughs> the plot of this movie follows two lesbians, one living in small town Whereversville, the other a big city les who has been sent to small town Whereversville to find a state Christmas tree on behalf of the state's governor. Surprise, the perfect Christmas tree happens to be on small town lesbians' property. The whole movie I kept thinking, aren't these government official types usually like super busy? And does the position of Christmas tree finder actually exist? Would it have two slots? But then I reminded myself, lifetime. This is a Lifetime original, Amanda. You should be grateful the plot of the movie wasn't horse lesbian falls for vet lesbian when horse lesbian Steve fakes an injury to bring the two of them together. <laughs> During the initial meet and greet for these two, Alma, small town les, gets a little uh, tongue-tied after seeing Charlie close up. Hi, uh, I'd like to talk to you just for a second about uh, the, uh, 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 you're, um, the, um, uh... Ay, ay, ay! Auga, auga! a hot lady! Just the, the buzzing. Oh, my chicken's all riled up. I'm really sorry about that. From the moment these two meet, a chase commences. Charlie is after two things. Her woman and her tree. Now, which thing she'll end up prioritizing is for you to find out. But the fun part for us is getting to watch them try to make it work despite Charlie's job and despite Alma's obsession with Christmas and competitions. Boy, oh, that Charlie was something else. Think she's gay? Dad. <laughs> Best moment of the movie so far. I wasn't surprised to see the community's positive reaction to this movie, at least partly because of Alma and Charlie's parents being supportive. Long have the gays asked and asked for movies to be made outside of coming out stories and horrific familial situations in regards to gay characters. And who better to fill that gap than the network known throughout my childhood for portraying women in horribly abusive marriages. I kid, but I love that Lifetime decided to shoot this movie. And I'm glad our community is finally getting some queer, goofy, cheesy holiday movies. Just like all the straight, goofy, cheesy movies we all watched growing up as kids. You wanna help? Yeah. Charlie is like, oh yeah, I'll help. Oh yeah, I want to help. Oh, I'm gonna help you right now. Oh, is this helping? To the lesbians. Yeah. To the lesbians. <laughs> to the les to the lesbians. <laughs> I've made that toast a time or two, and I love all these moments where they combine wholesome Christmas elements with wholesome gay elements. It is just, mwah, it's like a drag queen manger scene. Just beautiful. Wait, so white Christmas made you gay? Absolutely. Of course, discussing which fictional character on screen made you realize you were gay is a popular pastime with queers around the world. Who was your first crush slash obsession? I'm gonna be honest, the first time I saw J-Lo as Selena, it broke me. Like I just, I just melted into the floor. I could not, all I did was think about bustiers for about three years afterwards. Like, can I send you in? Yes, please. I'm like a good harness to start your day. <laughs> I see what you did there, Charlie. I see 
what you did. Tell me them putting on these harnesses wasn't a subtle shout out to the act of putting on a strap. Sometimes a tree can look incredible from a flyover. Maybe it's not such a perfect fit. Or well, maybe it's the one that you've been looking for your entire life. <laughs> Charlie going into a metaphor about trees when she's really talking about them is such lesbian church vibes. I was just like, yes, Charlie, there is a tree out there for everyone. We all have a tree, right? Or forests, if you're a poly tree. Alma? Five minutes is up. How do these kiss interrupters in movies not see that they're interrupting super romantic moments? Huh? Come on, Ted. How can you not see what's going on above you? Come on. I want to show you something. Uh, is it perchance your vagina? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, let's rate the side characters. Ricky Lake gets a 10, because it's Lifetime and it's Ricky Lake. Also, those sliding shots of the food inside her bakery nearly gave me cyber beanies, but I loved it, because obviously I'm addicted to pastries and candy. Charlie's work sidekick, Rohan, gets an 8. He's an adorable mama's boy who's obsessed with baking. Alma's mom gets a 10 for that amazing white hair, and also for encouraging Alma to go ask out Charlie. Alma's dad gets a 9. He's Damn near perfect, the dude can rock a Santa look inside a DJ booth. Plus, he gives us what was probably the most heartwarming moment of the movie, playing with Charlie at the piano. Rohan's mom gets a two. What a buzzkill. She didn't even say I love you to him, just hung up, and then he told the dead air, I love you, mom. Lastly, I'm giving the drone a seven. It was pretty fun, but we didn't get that awkward drone cam shot of Charlie and Rohan when they were searching for the perfect tree. I would have loved to see that. This movie is a bunch of cutesy moments strung together by a wispy plotline. It's a really fun watch for you and your partner. Add in a cup of hot chocolate and pile under some blankets and uh, I'm not gonna say this movie uh, led to some uh, romance under the blankets, but uh, I will just say Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. That's not to say this movie can't be enjoyed by singles, but I will say I watched this movie twice and it was almost a completely different experience watching it with my partner as opposed to watching it alone in my kitchen while I was doing dishes. So did you watch the movie? It was released just a couple of days ago. If so, what did you think? All right, we've got the big day coming up this week. Christmas Eve is on Friday and I will be putting out my second video as usual. I just want to thank all of you for being a part of my channel and being so awesome awesome and fun with your comments and your love and just all of it. It's really made this year really fun and exciting for me. I am sending you lots of holiday love and joy. I'm Amanda and from my really gay YouTube channel, I am wishing you the merriest of Christmases. All right, see you next video. And I won't be wearing this pretentious suit, this pretentious cream suit. This is my wedding suit, by the way. I busted out my wedding suit for y'all. Merry Christmas to you.